recently reacted to one of our first videos on his stream where we made comments on Sam Harris's writing on Israel Palestine. Um, it seems to me like a pretty embarrassing response. Uh, and so we figured we'd go through and uh, discuss what he said about um, our commentary. That's right. I feel like it's probably a little bit more than a few days by this point. But um, we've... Uh, Ethan, you're spoiling the aura. <laughs> we've tried our best in responding in a timely manner. But yeah, I mean, well, maybe we should like... You know, in spite of like someone's, you know, many clubs, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and prior commitments, you know, we've tried our best. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... um. You know, may maybe we should just give like a sort of recap of what we said in our video before we go over Destiny's response to it. So, I mean, like, basically, I take it that, um, so we were reacting to Sam Harris, and Sam Harris's basic argument is that there's this moral asymmetry between Israel and Hamas, and the moral asymmetry consists of the fact that um, the way Hamas conducts itself when engaging in its military operations is that it deliberately, intentionally targets and kills civilians, whereas Israel doesn't deliberately uh, intentionally target and kill civilians, but rather civilians end up being killed inadvertently as basically collateral damage. Um, and so it's basically the moral distinction Sam Harris was drawing was one between collateral damage on the one hand and um, intentionally uh, targeting civilians. Uh, and so our response was basically threefold. It was one, that Sam Harris makes an empirical mistake in asserting that Israel, in fact, does not intentionally target civilians. Uh, number two... Um, there's this point that basically, like, um, it's not clear that deliberately targeting civilians and killing them is much worse morally than killing them basically out of negligence or recklessness in pursuit of some other aim. And this isn't to say that there aren't intentions that you could have such that killing somewhat recklessly uh, in service of that intention would be better than killing people intentionally. But the point is that killing someone negligently in service of some intention, you know, some further intention, isn't necessarily better than killing someone uh, deliberately. And so that's just the wrong distinction or the wrong way to draw out the distinction. Um, if we're trying to, you know, make some like morally relevant cut between um, different kinds of military conduct. And then there was um, Brahmachine's point, which was an additional point, which is that basically even if you do have an intention that is somewhat redeeming, an intention that's better than killing civilians intentionally, that redemption can only go so far uh, and has to be reasonably weighed against, for example, the scale of the horror that you cause uh, when we judge the morality of your action. So those were the points that were made. and. Um, you might notice in Destiny's response that he doesn't really engage with any of them, but he nonetheless says um, a lot of things, and I guess that's what we're going to go over. Yeah, and I would, uh, one thing I would just say to note is, you know, note how, like, when we described our initial video, uh, we talked about uh, morality <laughs> and moral evaluation and things like that. That'll be very important to remember going forward as we watch Destiny's response. Yeah, note the absence of legal terms employed, both in my recollection just now and in the original video. Anyways. Fuck, why am I spite watching this? Fuck me. Oh, for context, Destiny is spite watching our video because he saw an aggro tweet thread that I made about him calling him a motivated reasoner. Look, yes, this is the greatest. Uh, Lauren um, De Laguna is the one that told me to buy this, so she gets some credit for that. With an article by Sam Harris that I think he wrote right after the attack. This was like October 12th. Uh, and the article is called The Sin of Moral Equivalence, so you can imagine where it's going. So the paragraph I'd like to read it says, Of course, there's much to talk about when considering the ethics of war and violence. 
there's much more to be confused about. For instance, as this war proceeds, many people will consider the deaths of non-combatants on the Palestinian side to be morally equivalent to the kids who were tortured and murdered at- Who is the, um, who is talking right now? <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Brutal. Um, yeah, but also, sound way different, or is this, he's gonna- Brad Machine is on or? Suicide Watch he's right now. By he got cooked. The hostages who may yet be murdered, and their murders broadcast on social is media. Is it an e-reader or an iPad? It's an iPad. It's the best iPad, the most expensive one. But they're not. There's a difference between collateral damage, which is, of course, a euphemism for innocent people killed in a war, and the intentional massacre of civilians for the purpose of maximizing horror. Simply counting the number of dead bodies is not a way of judging the moral balance here. Intentions matter. It matters what kind of world people are attempting oh, to Oh, never mind. It is him. Sorry, fuck. He just sounded like a normal human when I boosted his voice. <laughs> if Israel wants to prevent the inside of the Palestinians, it could do that easily tomorrow. But that isn't what it wants. And the truth is, the Jews of Israel... Oh, he's reading Sam Harris's article. That's what he's doing. I'm sorry. Fuck me. Okay would live in peace with their neighbors if their neighbors weren't enthralled to genocide fanatics. I actually am sympathetic to one saying that. Oh, uh, no, wait, that's, wait, he paid someone else to read the article and now he's going to critique it? Now this is not the infidel? What the fuck? Would live in peace but, with their uh, neighbors. I don't understand this part is that, like, in his wage slaves. <laughs> it literally says Rational Soft Street Podcast. Like, why would he just keep assuming that yeah, you're the only host of the podcast? There's three guys so in the image. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I mean... No, really, Bro Machine, yeah, he's just the guy we bring on and pay to, like, read <laughs> yeah, things yeah. for us. Yeah. No, Bro Machine is our diversity hire. Exactly. Um, we, had to get a, we had to get a cuck on the podcast for more yeah. room, greater diversity exactly. of voices. I'm um, here to, like, ask questions so that the average person can understand what the two of you are thinking. Right? <laughs> like, the dumb <laughs> yeah, one, exactly. actually. Yeah, exactly. yeah. The translator... Mm -hmm. I actually am sympathetic to one thing that uh, Sam Harris says there about the genocide claim, which is that, um, you know, I don't have a strong view on whether Israel is committing genocide. It's just like that's a facet of the debate that I just haven't explored really at all. Like, I don't think it's, it's massively morally deal breaking one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that, that too. Um, you know, same thing when people talk about is Israel in apartheid state, etc. It's like, well, you know, why not? Let's just talk about what's happening. Let's just like talk about the facts and then let's. Wow, good thing talk about how we should like morally evaluate them rather than like which you know which buzzwords you can apply uh to what's going on but anyways yeah i mean the like one kind of like prima facie argument mm, i think i accidentally boosted the volume on the <laughs> stream whatever nice. i'm sympathetic to hopefully is this much uh quieter or louder than it was previously Hold on. Stream? not committing genocide it's just yeah. that, like you know it seems like overall oh, israel's you right, know, killing a fairly small percentage of the population of gaza and it seems like if they wanted to they could kill a much larger percentage of the population in gaza and so if their intention was to cause a genocide it seems like that's really not what you'd expect i mean i think one of i think sam harris makes like you know we can talk about the kind of ethics uh of um you know this distinction he's drawing between uh you know intentionally killing civilians and then like um how did you say um collateral damage i think he also just makes a kind of an empirical mistake in asserting that what Hamas does is intentionally target civilians and what Israel does is, you know, target Hamas and then sometimes on accident kill people via collateral damage. Like, we just have lots of documented cases. Um, we have evidence uh, for it in this particular case of the 2023, now 2024 Israel-Gaza war. And then we have just a wealth of evidence from previous conflicts of Israel uh, directly intentionally targeting civilians, uh, you know, destroying civilian infrastructure and killing civilians in cases where there were no Hamas fighters present and no- No fighters present? doesn't mean that they were targeting civilians. It could be bad intel, it could be collateral damage, it could be a misfired weapon. Like, you have to prove that they were targeting civilians. That's a really big claim. And it just seems, again, Wait. if somebody so, so a you... soldier did something. So, note that, so Ethan says there, look, there have been cases where they kill civilians without any combat troops around, right? And Destiny's response is maybe it could be bad intel. Okay, sure, I guess that's possible in some cases. Or maybe it's collateral damage. But how's it supposed to be fucking collateral damage if there's no military targets? I just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's not, what does that mean? Well, and yeah. he stops me mid-sentence because what I what I actually say is like a conjunction, which is, uh, you know, cases where there are no fighters present and no plausible military objective, which, you know, it's like, and again, like even in these kinds of cases, um, it's possible that um it was like a misfire or something else but like the point is um uh if you have like lots of cases where some military is killing civilians where there's no plausible reason why they'd have like you know some military aim in doing so um 
you know, that just raises the probability of the hypothesis that they're intentionally targeting civilians, obviously. Uh, if you have enough cases of this and they look systematic enough, then you can man uh, mount a fairly plausible case that uh, this is something that's being done deliberately. I think that's pretty believable. There's a lot of hatred between both these people. I could buy if somebody says, again, just on, on its face, like, oh, I think a soldier killed like two Palestinians is like a war crime for no reason. He shot him dead in cold blood. It's like, uh, sure, I could believe that. I mean, we'd have to look at the facts to ascertain if that's true or not, but I could believe that. Sure, it's one person, maybe two. Yeah, but like targeting cells that are having multiple layers of military command above and below that are that are designing these strikes are like, I think there's just civilians in there, but we're going to fucking kill. We're going to kill that whole fucking family. Yeah, we're going to fucking kill. Can, I get the, can you sign off? The, yeah, let me let me check with the commander, commander, my CEO. So, yeah, fucking kill that family. Yes, fucking yes. Like, come on, bro. That's such an... It's possible. I'm not going to say that's impossible, but, like, we need some kind of evidence of that. Like, a little bit. And just saying that only civilians died in that strike is not the evidence for, for the criminal intent of explicitly targeting killing civilians for the sake of targeting killing civilians. Well, I think only civilians dying in an attack clearly would be evidence that the attack had the aim of killing civilians in the sense that on the hypothesis that they were intentionally trying to kill civilians, it would be far more expected that only civilians would die in the attack than uh, on the alternative hypothesis. Yeah, and more, and also, like, importantly, like, like you mentioned before, he leaves out uh, the other criteria or thing you mentioned, which is that there was no plausible military objective. Mm -hmm. You know, he only mentions the fact that only civilians were killed, but you said more than that. Mm -hmm. No plausible military objective, basically with the aim of, like I said earlier, creating domestic pressure from those populations on the militaries and combatants that they're uh, targeting in the war, um, but also just like demonstrating their deterrence capacities and so on. Um, like, so we know this is something that Israel does frequently is intentionally kill civilians for tactical reasons. So I think, yeah, he's just operating off of a what is that linking of, yeah, maybe in the, maybe before like 73, maybe before the, the Yom Kippur war, but like, um, and I guess maybe kind of in Lebanon, but with, um, I don't think the, the reprisals of the older Israeli government, I don't think Israel's like, if you look at like protective edge or cast lead, you're not seeing like an, the indiscriminate huge reprisals of the past, um, in terms of any of these wars, like I'm sorry, hold on, real quick. This is what it looks like. We can just go for one. This is a big one. This is what an Israeli reprisal looks like, okay? <clears throat> okay, okay, wait, pause it. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so like, so in response to you bringing up these like things like you take to be evidence of Israel currently uh, intentionally targeting civilians, and, you know, you from this, you draw the conclusion, OK, yeah, we think it's like systematic enough to say it's something they do so, at least somewhat frequently. Destiny's like response is to say, well, look, the reprisals aren't as bad as they like used to be. They used to be like a lot worse. Like, I don't understand. How is this supposed to be a compelling response at all? There seems to be like two ways to interpret Destiny here. Maybe he's kind of implying both of these at the same time or maybe just one of them. But like one is he's saying just because Israel used to do this, you can't infer from that that they do it now. And if that's his point, like, yeah, that's fine, but the, nobody made such an inference. So it's, like, not clear why that would be a relevant point. And then, like, the second possibility is he's saying, like, well, they used to do much worse things than they do now, so it can't be the case that what they're doing now is systematically, intentionally targeting civilians. But that's obviously just, like, fallacious. Like, the fact that they're not targeting civilians as severely as they used to does not show that they're not still intentionally targeting civilians. Yeah. It's also funny that now he's, like looking through the Wikipedia of the Samu incident to posture at me when I'm pretty sure I taught him what the Samu incident was in our conversation on his stream. Yeah, yeah I mean, the I, I just think that his argument is that we have a certain model of what it looks like when Israel uh, intentionally kills a lot of civilians and that this uh, most recent war doesn't fit that model. Therefore, Israel's probably not killing a lot of civilians. I mean, it's just, I think, as you've said, it's not clear to me that Israel 
maybe wants to kill civilians in the same way and in the same numbers, um, but that doesn't rule out the possibility that they're killing that they're still intentionally killing killing civilians, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you claim, like, uh, like you accuse, like Germany in the modern day of committing some war crime, and some German is like, ah, this is what it looks like if we wanted to commit war crimes, and it shows like Holocaust footage. This is what traditionally in the early days of the conflict. Israeli reprisals were brutal, explicitly so, because what Israel wanted to state was, listen, if you fuck with us, we are going to crush your villages and destroy your civilian population. We will kill everybody that we come across, more or less. I mean, a little hyperbolic, but like that was an Israeli reprisal. Reprisal. To compare that with like, to compare, so you saw this, okay? To compare that with like whole Israeli divisions that are like, hold on, hello? Um, uh, Muhammad Abdar, uh, we're actually going to be conducting a military operation tomorrow in Gaza City. We're just trying to see if you can get your family out of the apartment, preferably in the next 24 hours. Okay, yeah, 48 hours is fine. Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I'll call your neighbors. I'm going to call your neighbors too, okay? Yeah, we, we also, we put out like a whole region-wide warning yesterday. Did, did you see that? It should have popped up on your iPhone. To compare these two things is the same thing. It's so helpful. As kind of a side point, it's worth noting, like, he's citing, like, the leaflets and the phone calls that Israel makes before, like, you know, like, bombing civilian areas and whatnot, supposedly as kind of evidence of, like, oh, look how, like, humane the Israeli military is these days. But, like, there's lots of, you know, it's just worth noting as a caveat here, like, there's lots of controversies uh, surrounding these practices. Like, I remember in 2014, during Operation Protective Edge, the UN studied 15 airstrikes, Israeli airstrikes, and found that in only one of the 15 cases did Israel make one of these phone calls, and in only two out of 15 of them was Israel confirmed to have engaged in roof knocking. Um, and then, like, in uh, during cast led, there was a fact finding committee led by South African jurist John Dugard. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I could be butchering it though. Um, and that uh, uh, the Dugard report basically um, argued that the leaflets and phone calls uh, that Israel did basically failed to give details of the areas that were going to be targeted and conversely failed to give details of which areas were safe and also noted that because basically all of Gaza came under attack uh, and its borders with Israel and Egypt were sealed there was just nowhere for the civilian population to have gone really anyways um, and that the consequence of the warnings was a state of terror confusion and panic among the local population um, so there's lots of controversy <laughs> surrounding this stuff. Hilariously fucking retarded. Come the fuck on, dude. Give me a break. What an unbelievable... I only went off like one sentence also. He might walk all that back. I'm sorry, never mind. Maybe that wasn't... Structure and killing civilians in cases where there were no Hamas fighters present and no plausible military objective, basically with the aim of, like I said earlier, creating domestic pressure from those populations on the militaries and combatants. That there is no domestic pressure, though. What do you talk? What is the domestic? Pre this is their domestic. This is they own this domestic. Israeli reprisals have been about creating pressure against other nations, not a, a, on their own people, not on like an occupied territory. Like, what is? Well, I mean, it's it, destiny <laughs> talking about. Yeah, it's like firstly, like I literally just don't know what he's what he's talking about here. But like, it's weird. Like he says, like the reprisals were against other countries, not or were to you know create pressure from other countries, not to create domestic pressures. And it's like, yeah, that's fine because nobody here was talking about the reprisals, so that's just like an irrelevant point. And then like. Um, yeah, like the the whole like this is their domestic stuff. I don't really even know what he's getting at there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I have no idea. Like he mentioned, like like I don't know. There are no like Israelis in the in Gaza. You know, there are no settlements in Gaza. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what he means, like with the occupied territories and stuff like that. Yeah, the domestic pressure they're uh, targeting in the war um, but also just like demonstrating their deterrence capacities and so on um, like so we know this is something that israel does frequently is intentionally kill civilians for tactical reasons so i think yeah he's just operating off of a off of an empirical mistake and by the way this is something this is such a bullshit ass claim like this might have been it's army policy prior to 73 or prior to, prior to 67 right but like to pretend that they do this today they just intentionally kill like lone soldiers idf maybe settler fucks probably but as a policy of the Israeli Defense Force, or as some have taken to calling it the Israeli Offense Force, 
I call them the Israeli Omnivores. Come on. Yeah. I'm pretty sure IOF so, stands wait, for Israeli yeah. Occupation Force, not Israeli Offense Force, if that's what he's referring yeah. to. Anyways, go ahead. No, I mean, like, okay, so notice how, like, you know, basically, like, aside from the one, like, inference, which is kind of unclear in um, either interpretations, it was, like, unconvincing, you know, about how the, the reprisals, you know, are not as severe as they used to be. Notice how, like, Destiny hasn't really, like, you know, offered any sort of, like, counter evidence, you know, to the claim that Israel intentionally targets civilians. You know, his response has basically just been tacked incredulous towards it, like, just now. Mm-hmm literally like the un has acknowledged this there have been un reports showing that israel does this like most famously the goldstone report and obviously that's contentious given goldstone's retraction but you know we could debate about no that. it's contentious because of a whole host of epistemic flaws because they didn't even try to establish a mens rea for any of the purported war crimes which by the way is a requirement for a crime a criminal intent there was a whole host of reasons there was a whole paper fuck joanne did a bunch of research how did my my goddamn cable got wrapped around this fucking chair and i can't fucking solve the it's the most complicated puzzle. How did we even get back there? Hold on. Why would you even cite the Goldstone report? At least go with Am Amnesty International report. So, I mean, it's worth noting here that, like... So, I mean, he doesn't really give any concrete criticisms of the Goldstone report, which, by the way, I'm totally open to their being. I'm not, like, uh, gonna die in the hill of, like, the Goldstone report not having, like, methodological flaws or anything. I obviously haven't read the full Goldstone, Goldstone report. It's, like, fucking hundreds of pages. Um, and obviously Destiny hasn't either, and that's fine. But, like, you know... Um, he doesn't really give any concrete criticisms of the Goldstone report. He kind of gestures at, like, somebody he knows who has criticisms of it and then says, like, they didn't attempt to establish intent, which, like, um, I mean, clearly you can read the report and they do adduce what anybody can recognize as, like, abductive evidence that this is what Israel was doing, was that they were systematically, intentionally targeting civilians. You know, they cite all kinds of, like, cases and specific examples of military attacks against civilian infrastructure and so on that Israel carried out, um, the best explanation of which was that it was an intentional attack against civilians. So it's like, yeah, they, they clearly do uh, cite evidence in favor of intent, so I'm not really sure what he's talking about. Um, There's other reports you could cite. Why would you cite Goldstone here? I mean, you did cite other the reports. National reports to point out that Israel does this in various different conflicts. Yeah. And no, I don't know if Amnesty International, I mean, he could link a reference when he wants. I said in Israel is intentionally trying to murder civilians. Brav. Um, human rights. Okay, so... Uh, here is a quote from the Amnesty International report on Operation Cast Lead called 22 Days of Death and Destruction. Um, this is on page 55. It reads, quote, The extensive devastation of civilian homes and property cannot be dismissed as collateral damage. The patterns and scale of the attacks, statements by Israeli officials before and during the three-week military offensive, and graffiti left by Israeli soldiers on the walls of Palestinian homes, which they took over during their incursion into Gaza, indicates that the wholesale destruction was to a large extent deliberate and an integral part of a strategy at different levels of the chain of command from high-ranking officials to soldiers in the field so it's like a pretty clear finding of the amnesty international report that this was deliberate and systematic um, the targeting of civilians rights watch reports have borne out that israel does this um bit reports have claimed that israel does this so this isn't really all that contentious or or controversial from the perspective of the international human rights literature sam harris just likes to claim that this isn't something israel does with no evidence uh, even though that's a very kind of fringe perspective that isn't really borne out in any of the literature so the first thing i think is worth considering is that even granting sam harris's assumption about intentions his view seems to be that intentions matter a huge amount but i think that we should reasonably limit the amount to which intentions matter you should be able to judge that one action is significantly morally worse if it kills like a magnitude more people even if the intentions are better so even if it's true that that's fine but then you disagree with literally the entire foundation of all of international and all criminal law by the way which is fine if you want to disagree with that that's fine but just know that you are standing against an ocean of of, of legal history in every country in the fucking world, except maybe, ironically enough, maybe against like Islamic fundamentalists or like some crazy fundamentalist that doesn't want to assess criminal intent. Israel is. <laughs> I don't know what that last comment was about. Yeah, I mean, 
Oh, go ahead, permission. You can respond since he's addressing you. Yeah, well, I mean, the first thing to note is just that I explicitly said morally worse, right? Um, and so not only am I comfortable with disagreeing with the moral proclamations of international law, but I'm not even sure that there are really that explicit moral proclamations. Like, I'm not sure that it, international law is purely a result of moral thinking. There's probably also a lot of thinking about, like, what what sorts of laws are possible to get countries to buy into, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, I just, I just don't really care. This is a very underwhelming response. Why can't he actually say why I'm wrong? It's crazy. Yeah, B yeah I mean, yeah, it's just, like it's just clear. Like you know, you were making a moral point. You explicitly said, and uh, Destiny just responds by like bringing up the law. Like I mean, you're not at all in conflict with the foundations of international law because you guys are talking about different things. Hey, Bro Machine, you're a vegan, right? Yeah, why? You do know that factory farming is literally legal in every oh. single legal system in the world, okay? Oh my god. You're standing yeah. against I'm an a... ocean when you make that moral oh, evaluation okay. about factory farming. Yeah. I know, it's oh, it's over. And th this is like, a, as we'll see, this is a repeated mistake that Destiny makes. You know, you'll see this like throughout, like over half of his criticisms, I would say, are just him like failing to comprehend the distinction between mor morality and legality. And it's honestly just really baffling because, okay, like we explicitly say, whenever we're delivering our arguments, we explicitly say, morally, you know, this seems problematic, or morally, this doesn't seem relevant. Morally, 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 never mm -hmm. legally, you know? And we, and Sam Harris is making a moral point. The guy we're responding to is explicitly talking about moral evaluation of different actors. So I don't know what was going on with Destiny, you know, if he was just so spite-filled that it caused him to miss this, or if he's just gotten retarded or something. But yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah, and it's like the the only way to interpret destiny such that what he's saying has anything to do with what we're saying. So if we're going to be like maximally charitable, the only ways to interpret him are like, okay, maybe he's saying that because all of these legal systems say X, that's a good reason for me to take it that I should have uh, the same evaluation morally as like all of these legal systems do. But I mean, that's, that doesn't seem compelling at all. I mean, there are lots of widespread uh, laws and so on that I take to be unjust or out of accordance with my norms. Um, <clears throat> and then yeah, like, like, you know... It's like saying, you know, someone says, look, it's like wrong to cheat on your spouse. And then you say, oh, it's like legal, you know, right, right. It's not illegal. Yeah. yeah like it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with my values, not according perfectly with like mainstream legal decisions. Uh, that's totally fine with me. Um, and but and also just like there's this point that kind of brummishing gestured at, which is just like there can be legal distinctions that exist for non-moral reasons. Like there are all sorts of pragmatic reasons and whatnot for why the laws are as they are. So like it's not even clear that my moral evaluation is in tension with the underlying motivation for these various legal systems because it's not clear that the motivation for these legal systems was moral uh, in nature in the first place. Um, anyways. Hamas operatives, but ends up killing 20,000 Palestinian civilians. Uh, on the other hand, Hamas is actively <coughs> trying to kill as many civilians as possible. It still seems that because of the very limited numbers of civilians killed, which is about a thousand, right? That the conclusion should be that at least they're pretty similar morally, if not the Israeli action is far worse morally. And I think that Sam Harris just seems to have this view overall that intentions matter far more than they seem to matter to me. I agree That's with cool. that. Uh, and when we're talking about the basically the morality of intentions when it comes to evaluating different actors in a conflict, I think one thing that's like often lost on uh, people sometimes, or maybe even people like Sam Harris who make this comparison, is that I also think there's something quite bad morally about having these like goals or intentions where you want to pursue some aim. So like in this case, like kill Hamas, and you just don't care about like um, anything else like that stands in your way it's like sort of collateral damage yeah like is there anything if we were to go to if we were to read so elements of crime um is going to be uh as part of the rome statute the international criminal court there's an additional book published called elements of crimes which details all of the war crime elements that must be met for a particular war crime that's mentioned under article 8 of the rome statute which lists all the war crimes how many times if we can if we control f intend how many times do you think that shows up in here Intend, intend, intend. These are crimes. For criminal elements, you have to have intention. Why would you say I don't care what the intent is for a crime, for a criminal act? 
Okay, pause it. In every legal system. In okay, so like, once again, like destiny just like makes this like conflation. I was not talking about, you know, intentions as it, you know, comes to whether something is a war crime or not. You know, I was not talking about it in that respect. I explicitly said, oh, I think there's something morally bad still about not having the intent to kill civilians. I explicitly said it was more still morally problematic. I was speaking in terms of morality. I have no idea how Destiny missed this, okay? So uh, in addition to his like response to me, just like not being like substantive at all and just not engaging with what I said, you know, so it's like basically worthless as a response to what I said. Um, I think like Destiny, uh, like also what he says about like international law in terms of, you know, you have to intentionally kill civilians, you know, in order for something to be like a war crime. I also think that's wrong. And before I like I go into this, just to be clear, you know, uh, this point, you know, uh, my initial argument that Destiny is responding to. Um, whether that succeeds or fails has nothing to do with this point I'm about to make, because this is a legal point, not a moral one. But under Article 8 of the Rome Statute, which is the article on war crimes, it states that one action that would fall under the category of a war crime is, quote, intentionally launching an attack in the knowledge that such attack will cause incidental loss of life or injury to civilians or damage to civilian objects or widespread long-term and severe damage to the natural environment, which would be clearly excessive in relation to the concrete and direct overall military advantage anticipated. Now, notice that in this uh, description of this action, even though the civilian deaths are incidental, that is, your goal in this attack was not to kill civilians, you know, it's just the deaths of civilians happened as a byproduct of your attack. As long as you have knowledge that civilians are going to die and you are suitably negligent and excessive in relation to your military goals when it comes to causing the injury or death of civilians, this will constitute a war crime. Now, the case that I was describing when Destiny objected to me was a case in which someone, like, is launching attacks um, and they aren't intentionally targeting civilians, but they know that civilians will die. Lots of civilians will die, and they just don't care. They're completely negligent, and they don't do anything um, to ensure, you know, or min minimize civilian deaths or anything like that. They're not concerned about efficiency in that regard. Um, so the case I described, you know, according to the Rome Statute, that could pr plausibly be a war crime, okay? And if it was committed during war. And so there isn't like a big fundamental difference in terms of intentionally killing civilians versus not intentionally killing civilians in terms of what constitutes a war crime according to the Rome Statute, contra destiny. Now, destiny is free to argue for like a different distinction under international law, which would be uh, maybe more accurate, such as like, you know, are the attacks like um, uh, disproportionate or not? But that is like a different distinction than the one he was originally arguing for, which is just the bare fact of whether you intentionally killed these civilians or not. And it's different than the point I was responding to with Sam Harris. So that would be, in effect, him giving up his initial criticism. Um, and, you know, I just like think it's like so hilarious that Destiny's response is like so incompetent that not only does he like reference something, uh, international law, that is, which is completely irrelevant to my point, which was a moral one, but he also doesn't even get the facts right when it comes to international law. And so his uh, response to me fails on both grounds. It One, it doesn't substantively engage, and then also it just is as false premises. True. In the world, mens rea, intent or knowledge of wrongdoing that constitutes part of okay. the crime as opposed to the action or conduct of the accused. So, yeah. it's true. It's true that you need to have, like, you know, you need to know these civilians will die and stuff, which is, like, what was happening in the case I described. They know, they just don't care, you know. But the point is, in terms of what we were talking about, which is, was the killing of civilians intentional or was it incidental, like a byproduct or something like that? You know, that that distinction on its own, you know, does not decide, determine, it's not the sole determinant of whether something is a war crime or not. Mm. Intent is important. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, it's like if somebody, like, blew up, like, an elementary school, we'd be like, dude, what the fuck? But it wouldn't be a crime. The United States, United States, bombs, hospital, Afghanistan. This literally happened a couple okay, of years like, ago. Okay, like, again, we were not talking about, like, you know, war crimes. Even though, like, you know, I've sort of, like, entertained um, Destiny's, like, response, like, on legal grounds, you know, just to show that it still 
Bales, you know, we were not talking about war crimes. Like, I have no idea why he thinks we were. We did not mention war crimes once. Yeah, well, and it's funny he's saying this would not be a crime because, like, <clears throat> if you listen to the full example, it's of, like, some, like, domestic terrorist, like, bombing a school to, like, kill mm -hmm. the principal in, like, a revenge plot. And I would like to hear Destiny uh, defend the view that this would be legal. <laughs> yeah, if it was committed during yeah. the war. Well, no, the, the hypothetical isn't even a war crime. It's just a domestic terror attack. Yeah. But, yeah. anyways. Five years ago? In 2015? I thought this happened under, um, Biden. Was it eight years? No way, it was already eight years ago. It can't be the case. That's not true. I thought it happened recently. United States bombs hospital Afghanistan. I thought it happened right after our pullout. Am I crazy? But, anyway, regardless, this is not a war crime. Okay, the, like the chances that the United States was trying to target and murder a hospital and the people in the hospital is not true. Okay, like, well, if they weren't trying to hit the hospital, then it's not analogous to the case that I gave, which is a case mm -hmm. where you do try to hit the hospital, but because you're going after, you know, to make this more like analogous to a war crimes case, because that's kind of where he wants to take it. Like the case that I'm giving is more like if you bomb a hospital because you, you know, knowing that it will, you know, you will hit a hospital and you will kill civilians, but you're doing it because you're trying to kill some sort of enemy combatant or achieve some further aim other than killing civilians, and you kill civilians in service of that. Um, so that it seems like the way he's describing this uh, Afghanistan hospital bombing that I'm not really familiar with uh, actually makes it disanalogous from the case that I was giving. That's why it's not a war crime. Even though the action itself is tragic and horrible, right? Or when the United States, am I making this up? Did the U.S. shoot down an Iranian plane over the Strait of Hormuz, or was that Saudi Arabia? Um, shoots down plane, civilian, commercial, Strait, Hormuz. Who shot this down? It was shot down by the United States. This was not a war crime, because the United States did not intend to shoot and kill a fucking commercial civilian airliner. It's not a war crime, it's tragic, and it's horrible, and it's sad, and civilians died. But the intent here to kill civilians was absent, which is the criminal intent necessary to establish it. It's a war crime. In before somebody looks up and this boy is considered a war crime. <laughs> <laughs> You could, okay, well, hold on. If you did want to argue that it was a war crime, this would be the way you'd do it. According to the Iranian government, the shootdown was an intentionally performed in all of life. No, that's retarded. Or no, no, well, the shootdown was intentional, but was it, did they know it was civilians? Even if there was a mistaken identification, which Iran never accepted, it argued that that constituted negligence and recklessness amounting. Yeah, like a case of mistaken identification is just totally different than the kind of case that I was giving, which was yeah. knowingly targeting an area where you're going to kill lots of civilians to further some other military aim or some other aim in general. To an intentional crime, not an accident. That could be an argument. So for instance, um, so for instance, let's say that you just decided, I'm just gonna shoot down every fucking plane that's coming out of Iran, right? And you managed to shoot down a civilian plane. Now, even though your intention there wasn't to shoot down a civilian plane, you're not meeting your Geneva Convention obligations to protect uh, a defending population or to protect a civilian population um, or to do due deference in, in choosing targets. So you could argue that's a war crime, for sure. Okay, wait, so, pause. Statue Article 8, war crime, but that would- There is, but um, so, like, the fact that now Destiny is, like, acknowledging this, you know, makes his response to us, like, even more bizarre, you know? <laughs> I just find it, like, funny. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, there is a, a, a section under the article of the mm -hmm. statute that talks about this. Mm -hmm. Be, like, controversial That's not what happened here. Right? Anyway, sorry. Fuck. He was like, oh, no, don't worry. The, the principal, like you know, killed my wife. So I was getting revenge and I, you know, I just didn't really care. I had to kill the rest of the, you know, the children and the people in the building to get to that guy. And that's just fine with me. Like, you know, maybe our moral evaluation, would. that's literally how 
I'm sorry. God, fuck, kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. Kill me. That's literally how international law works. <laughs> yes. You're allowed to do a proportionality analysis of a military target as inside. Well, it's funny because he literally cut me off as I was saying our moral evaluation would not change that uh, much. And he cuts me off to say, but this is the distinction under international law. It's like this like basic like 101 failure to distinguish like yeah. legal concepts and moral concepts. But additionally, I mean, what's crazier is that also the example that you give is explicitly not proportionate, right? It's like you're killing mm -hmm. an entire school full of children in order to kill one person. Um, and then, so you might think that even in the case of Israel, um, even if they're not intentionally trying to kill civilians, it's still disproportionate in the relevant sense, right? And you, so you're saying, even if you don't intend to kill the kids, if it's disproportionate in a certain way, uh, it might, it's definitely morally wrong and it might even be legally wrong. And his response is to say, oh, look, well, it might be proportionate. You just have to do the proportionality analysis. <laughs> right, so, right, right. Well, yeah. Then why is it proportionate, Destiny? Explain this to us. Right, right. If that military target and the destruction of that target will aid your war effort, then you make the proportionality cost how many civilians die. There might be 20 civilians that die if you kill a Hamas commander. That might be a proportionality argument that you can justify, and it wouldn't be a contravention of international law. And you wouldn't want it to be. Nobody would follow international law if that meant that they couldn't go to war with enemies that were violating their obligations to their civilian population to protect them, the human shields. Change a little bit, but, like, not that much, you know? Like, we wouldn't say there's, like, some massive qualitative gulf, I think. Yeah, um, and I think what it's worth noting is that for that guy, I would definitely say that he's acted morally worse than somebody who, in cold blood, premeditatively kills one person, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's a oh, okay. Good point, too. And, uh, and I think, like, Noam Chomsky tried to make this point to Sam Harris as well in their, their email exchange that, like, no, actually, this distinction between, you know, viewing, like, oh, my my end is to kill people, like, that's my end in, it, in and of itself, versus, like, oh, my end is some other thing, and killing people is just, like, collateral damage I'm, I'm fine with and, and, and kind of indifferent to. You know, this isn't that all, all that morally relevant a distinction. It literally is the distinction for war crimes. It, it, that is literally the to distinction for international law, is whether or not might be you're trying to... Um, like, again, just, like, I know we've been pointing this out repeatedly, but I said... Isn't that morally relevant of a distinction? Destiny's reply, it is the distinction under international law. <laughs> that point is either completely irrelevant because it's just not intention with what I said, or if it is intended to be evidence against what I said, it's just completely uncompelling. Because I don't know why I would take it that... Um, you know something that i support not being uh you know some something that i take to be a morally relevant distinction not being a distinction under international law or vice versa i don't know why that would suggest some problem with my values um but anyways um it is fuck i always fuck this up Rule 14, so this is the International Humanitarian Law Database for customary international law. These are basically rules of law that everybody should be following, yeah. even if you're not party to any... I, mean, I think it's like basically also like clear why we were talking should. about morality, because like Sam Harris's point, his dis distinction was not in terms of international law, but in terms of moral evaluation of yeah. actors. The Sam Harris article that we're replying to, which Brummachine announces the title of at the beginning of the video, is and titled... Reads. Yeah, yeah, it is titled... Uh, the sin of what is it? The sin of moral equivalence. Uh, equivalency. Yeah. Yeah. The sin of moral equivalency, or something like that. I mean, it's just like it couldn't have been clearer what the subject of the conversation is here. Rule fourteen is the proportionality in attack. Launching an attack which may be expected to cause incidental loss of civilian life, injury to civilians, damage to civilian objects, or combination thereof, which would be excessive in relation to the concrete and direct military advantage anticipated, is prohibited. This is the proportionality cost. So if there is a concrete and direct military advantage that you anticipate, then you're allowed to take the attack. It's the exact opposite of what they're claiming here. Fuck, why am I watching this? In their Wait. Mail exchange. <laughs> that Wait, is on, not the opposite of what... Yeah. Even if you interpreted our claims as being legal, that's Legally, not the opposite yeah. of what we said. They were in about... Uh, which is like what I mentioned before, right? So like now, like I guess now that like Destiny is like doing some more reading on stream, you know, he started to notice that you know, it's not so much intentions in terms of what constitutes a war crime legally, you know, but it's like in relation to other things like foreknowledge, proportionality, whether it's excessive in relation to your military goals. And now he's shifted to that.
but like we are not talking about a distinction in terms of that we're just talking about a distinction in terms of intentions yeah um that like no actually this distinction between you know viewing like oh my my end is to kill people like that's my end in it in and of itself versus like oh my end is some other thing and killing people is just like collateral damage i'm i'm fine with and, and, and kind of indifferent to you know this isn't that all all that morally relevant a distinction it is the distinction it is literally the Dude, defining the distinction it's, it's between it's these morally tribes. relevant kill me not uh, between the only other thing is to say i think that the induction that sam harris has here which is that if israel had more malicious incentives than just to kill hamas they would not be acting the way they do i'm not sure that even if israeli officials really badly wanted to commit genocide they would think it's worthwhile given the situation with their allies i'm not sure that the given the current political state of the west the west would be continued to be highly supportive of israel if they extremely obviously just commit genocide so maybe what there is to say here is that for example israel israeli diplomats and leaders have privately pushed for things like moving hundreds of thousands of gazans to egypt for the duration of the war and I'm not sure I find it a little bit difficult to believe that they would all be allowed back into Gaza afterwards. So it seems that... Why is there nothing that you can do? So if they tell the citizens to move, that's bad because it's ethnic cleansing. If they didn't tell any of them to move and the death toll was 250,000, now it's genocide. Well, what are they supposed to fucking do? At least if their nefarious intentions, like, I don't know, decreasing the Gaza... Gonna respond to that. What they were supposed yeah. to do is not brutalize Gaza <laughs> in yeah. the first place, right? Or if your attack just, I don't know, like, be more reserved, not... <clears throat> Yeah, uh, like yeah, yeah. like have more tactical um uh small scale attacks i mean the, the entire point is weird also me saying that was it a moral condemnation i wasn't saying it's like morally wrong to move them uh to egypt i was saying that this is what you would expect if israel's real goal was to like depopulate gaza um so i don't know he's just not tracking again it's crazy yeah and it's like um <clears throat> Uh, like you know destiny's point just seems to be like oh look there's this dilemma like they're they're brutalizing gaza super severely so if people stay they're going to die and that would be bad but you're also gonna say it's bad if they have to leave because they're getting brutalized like you know there's this dilemma either either they leave and they have to leave their homes which is bad or they die which is bad so what what, what are you know what is israel supposed to do and the answer is don't create the dilemma where this large group of people either have to leave their home or die by brutalizing their home right like that's the clear answer um or like Brumachine said even if you do want to you know attack gaza you can be more reserved in terms of like how you do it etc we should make it easier to have more settlements in the future or something like that their actions wouldn't be that unexpected under this hypothesis and sam harris likes to in addition to his distinction between like yeah he, he has a few argumentative moves he really likes with respect to israel palestine and one of them is this distinction between collateral damage and uh, killing people being your intrinsic goal but then like another one is he he makes this in addition to his distinction between like yeah he, he has a few argumentative moves he really likes with respect to israel palestine and one of them is this distinction between collateral damage and uh, killing people being your intrinsic goal that's a huge fucking distinction you fuck what a dumb fucking thing to say. The difference between collateral damage versus targeting and actually trying to kill civilians? That is a massive distinction. But then, like, another one is he, he makes... No, I mean, again, like, not to repeat myself, but not inherently. <laughs> like, again, you could have an intention such that killing civilians recklessly in service of that intention is better than killing civilians as your inherent goal. But I don't think that necessarily, if you're killing civilians recklessly in service of some other goal, I don't think that's necessarily better than in uh, killing civilians because your goal is to kill civilians, particularly if the goal that you're recklessly killing civilians in favor of is either like morally arbitrary or even morally bad, <laughs> right? Yeah. Makes this point about like any kind of gestures at in the, the quote that you gave where he like you know he's like well the hamas if uh, if they if this if the positions were reversed right and all of a sudden the palestinians had the power over israelis that israelis have over palestinians. and again that distinction that i just mentioned is a moral one <laughs> Palestinians, then the Palestinians would be being way more brutal towards the Israelis than the Israelis are currently being towards the Palestinians. Yep. Um, I don't think that that's all that interesting morally, especially because, like, sure, you're saying, like, what if positions were reversed right now, given the, the history that there's been for, like, the past several decades? But I think that kind of, like, removes some, like, very ethically relevant dimensions of the conflict from consideration. Like, so to give, like, a kind of an analogy, imagine if I, like, kidnapped somebody, and my intention with them was bad, but it wasn't, like, as bad as it could be. Like, I don't want to kill them or torture them. I just want to kind of kidnap them and keep them like imprisoned in my basement with like minimal food and water and and technology and so on so they have like a really shitty life and then like over time they obviously are going to build up lots of resentment towards me and it might get to the point where they have so much resentment over the fact that i've been kidnapping them that they like want to kill me you know in fact they want to kill me pretty brutally so i like how 
rightfully, pro-Palestinian people will say, and this is a, I agree with this claim, is that Zionists will say history begins on October 7th, and that's bullshit. History doesn't begin on October 7th. There is a whole history of conflict between these two parties. But then the pro-Palestinians will go, actually, history began with the blockade in Gaza. <laughs> no. History didn't begin with the blockade of Gaza either, motherfucker. What, like, if we switch the position. Yeah, so I don't know how he got history began with the blockade in Gaza from my statement, right? Like, my statement was that, um, you know, I'm basically building this analogy. You know, basically my point is that Palestinians have maybe have like worse dispositions towards Israelis like in terms of how vicious they feel how viciously they feel towards Israelis than what Israelis feel towards Palestinians um, but just to say that just to point out that fact uh, as evidence that there's a moral asymmetry that favors the Israelis in the context of the conflict isn't a very good argument because you can very plausibly argue that the reason for that difference in moral disposition is the difference and how these parties have treated each other throughout the course of the conflict. And in particular, I'm kind of building this analogy, which basically does kind of imply that um, Israelis have been oppressing Palestinians and have been the primary aggressor throughout uh, the course of the conflict. Um, and Destiny's response is, well, the conflict didn't begin with the blockade, but like, that's fine. You know, my interpretation of the history that Israelis have been the primary aggressors doesn't rely on an only beginning of the blockade to now kind of vision of the history. You know, I have a view of the history stretching back much further than that that supports the same narrative. And the thing is, Destiny should know this because I debated him about the Six Day War, <laughs> which notably occurred long before uh the blockade of gaza so destiny knows that i have arguments with respect to um the history and my interpretation of the history uh prior to that point i guess so it's kind of weird that he would say this and all of a sudden now i'm trapped in that person's basement they're gonna do a lot worse things to me well and it's also worth noting that like my point here is to basically refute sam harris's point that it's like morally sufficient to show that there's this difference in dispositions between the two parties and i'm pointing out that no that's not sufficient because if that difference in disposition were caused by these like historical factors um that would suffice to diffuse the kind of asymmetry or the argument that you're making or the asymmetry that you're getting at so like um you know, even if it were the case that in the context of Israel-Palestine, my analogy doesn't hold, or it's not the case that the difference in dispositions being gestured at is the product of this difference in treatment and the fact that Israelis have been worse to the Palestinians than vice versa, even if that were the case, um, which is what Destiny's arguing, my point would still stand that, um, you know, Sam Harris's point about the dispositions doesn't stand on its own um, as a compelling moral argument than what I'm doing to them. But the point is the reason that they have those dispositions and those uh, kinds of attitudes such that that's the way that they would act if positions were reversed is because in the actual world, I'm the one that's been oppressing them and not vice versa. And I think that's- Oh like my God, the oppression bullshit. <laughs> I agree with that practically, but it seems like secondary co-location may be plausible to be non-prosecutable. Like, I mean- Non-prosecutable because it. it's for utility. <laughs> so like, I, I like how like, you know, basically, you know, he doesn't, like, offer any, like, sort of substantive, like, response or, like, counterexample to the moral point you're making. He just, like, latches on to some word that he, uses that <laughs> yeah, he doesn't yeah. like and soy it out about it. Yeah. Very, very morally relevant, and I don't think it's appropriate to uh, to kind of just remove that from, from our kind of ethical consideration of what's going on. Yeah, and um, certainly, like, it seems like in that case, um, basically, like, what the person is doing in the actual world, this person who's kidnapped this person, seems, like, way more relevant, you know, than, like, uh, what... Uh, these people would do in different possible worlds where the roles were reversed. The entire argument of move is strange because it would seem to imply that it's justified to just intern people if they have bad intentions towards you. Um, like if I walk down the street and I just somehow psychically know that somebody really intends to kill me, even if they're like physically unable to, um, that I would be justified in locking them up. And this isn't that literally what happened, except it wasn't psychically you <laughs> figured out they were trying to kill you. It was called the second intifada and it was called Hamas and Fatah were contributing lots of violence into the region. It was called Turk, I think. Do you guys think Destiny ate breakfast this morning?
<laughs> and Iran were literally shipping weapons um, through the Mediterranean Sea into Gaza, and that's why the blockade was put up. Uh, like, it's not like it shit, this shit happened randomly. I think people literally think, why does a blockade exist in Gaza? Well, one day, uh, Netanyahu was sitting around talking to, you know, the ghosts of whoever fucking Hitler. And he was like, how can I collectively punish these people the hardest? I want the biggest collective punishment, apartheid, genocidal state possible, but I also don't want to get caught internationally. What can I do? Oh, well, let me tell you. Have you considered a blockade for no fucking reason whatsoever so that you can brutally put these Palestinians on a diet? The ones with the 30% obesity rate whose population has exploded in the past 20 years? Yeah, starve them to death. It's funny, Destiny likes, this is kind of like a somewhat irrelevant side point, but Destiny likes to bring up the Palestinian obesity rate as if that's like a meaningful indicator. Like, oh, like people say the Gazans have it so poorly, but look, they, you know, they're super obese. It's like, it's interesting. Like, I wonder, like, who would Destiny guess has a higher obesity rate between South Korea and North Korea, <laughs> right? Like... Because, in fact, you know, like, North Korea has a higher obesity rate than South Korea, um, even though, obviously, North Korea has much worse standards of living and is, like, a much more, you know, oppressive place to live uh, in general or for the average person. Like, just because there's some, like, you know, like, ruling class or higher-ups who, like, you know, disproportionately benefit from the resources such that a lot of them are able to be obese, you know, that really doesn't say much about the general standard of living for most people in the region. Um, yeah. Anyways. Also, Bro Machine, would you like to respond to that sneaky criticism of your... I don't know, it just doesn't, it doesn't make much sense. I don't know. Like, yeah. He, I remember at one part of this video, I say like, well, um, something like you, it doesn't make sense unless you think they have the capabilities. Um, but we already explained that they don't have the capabilities. And then Destiny's like, yeah, well, the morally relevant factor is that they have the capabilities. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, well, it's not even... in this part of the video, but yeah. like, it's just totally, it's yeah. just total assertion. Out of us. It's insane. Yeah. And no, and I mean, like at that point, he just addressed from you. It's like you say, okay, you know this like intention, you know, and then you're going on to make the point how because of other factors that's not morally relevant. And then Destiny's like, wait, isn't it? Isn't it true that we actually do know Hamas has these intentions and stuff like that? You know, but yeah, that was assumed in the hypothetical. The whole point is that it's not narratively relevant because of other factors. That was your point. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think Bro Machine's main mistake was to not recognize that Israel, in fact, does not ascertain information about Hamas's motives via psychic superpowers. Exactly, exactly. Come on, bro. Seems wrong. And so then, you know, people might point to the disanalogy being that, well, Palestinians and Hamas specifically are actually capable of doing this type of damage to Israel. But as we've talked about earlier, that just seems highly in doubt. I mean, the ability to do another fairly large attack seems very unlikely. So then the intention... <laughs> you know what else seemed fairly unlikely? On October 6th, October 7th. <laughs> okay, so I mean, it's worth noting. I mean, we just, we addressed this earlier in the podcast. Um, I mean, Destiny's watching a segment uh, from the podcast, so he didn't watch the full podcast, which is like fair. I'm not criticizing him for that. But yeah, I mean, this is a terrible argument, um, which we kind of already addressed, which is, you know, basically um, to say, oh, well, it's, you know, October 7th, something like October 7th isn't unlikely to happen again because it happened once. It's like, first of all, the fact that you observe some low probability event one time is, you know, not good grounds for believing that you're going to observe it again. Or it's at least, a, you know, observing something one time is very weak evidence uh, that you're going to observe it again, especially when the conflict has been going on for many, many decades at this point, and we've only observed one October 7th. Um, or at least, you know, if you just want to restrict it to the, you know, the occupation. Because um, obviously there have been bigger attacks, like, earlier in the in the conflict. But, um, you know, so that's one point. And then, like, another point is just, like, in this case, we have special reason uh, to believe that it's unlikely to happen again. Namely, because we know that the October 7th attacks only succeeded because of a fluke. Um, Israel knew that Hamas was going to attack 
uh, they had the attack plans, they observed Hamas training for the attack, or I shouldn't say they knew they were going to attack, but they had every reason to believe they were going to. They observed Hamas training for it, etc. Um, and they basically just neglected to do anything about it, presumably because the thought was like, oh, you know, maybe they're, Hamas is just posturing, but they would, you know, never be ballsy enough to ever actually attempt something like this. Um, which obviously, since we just watched Hamas do it, um, we now know that that's not true. So presumably, it's very unlikely that the Israeli military makes that same mistake again of neglecting Hamas's willingness or ability to launch a large-scale attack. Um, and then it's like other points we raised are like, even if uh, Israel did feel the need to take some measures to protect itself from the possibility of another October 7th from happening, there were lots of measures that they could have taken uh, to achieve that, which would have been much lower cost uh, in terms of moral considerations and humanitarian considerations than this all-out brutal assault on Gaza. Like, they could have just, like, ramped up security around the fence, because remember, the fence around Gaza is, like, 40 miles long. Israel could easily station more troops there, such that Hamas busting through uh, the wall becomes highly unlikely. Um, you know, they could have, been, you know, furthermore engaged in targeted assassinations of Hamas leadership, etc., um so yeah i mean this is a uncompelling response yeah yeah and the and the reason we know this by the way is like from a report uh by the new york times whose sources were documents emails and interviews uh with israeli officials um and the 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 sort of uh you could say like evidence they had beforehand um you know well for instance they found a, like a year before uh the october 7th attacks they found like a 40 page document you know which outlined like point by point you know basically exactly the type of attack that hamas would later carry out on october 7th and then three months before the attacks in july um someone in israel signals intelligence agency like had observed and warned that hamas had conducted like an intense day-long like training exercise where they were basically like simulating what was going on in that 40 page document outlining the attacks in which they would later enact for real on october 7th and you know they even um officials like had uh, uh privately conceded according to this investigation by the new york times that had they actually taken these you know warning signs seriously and direct redirected you know some significant reinforcements to the south they could have intercepted hamas blunted the attacks and like prevented them and so they like would not have been as severe and obviously they're not gonna make that same mistake again so i think it's safe to say it is in fact unlikely you know that uh, another october 7th event will happen mm -hmm. sorry i missed that what were you saying something about uh oppression bullshit yeah no true, true. alone doesn't seem like that much of a reason to maintain uh, an unjustified and unreasonable occupation I mean, so I guess it depends. Uh, the the relevance of, of that point, I guess, to be fair, depends on what they are trying to prove by making the point. Which is like, are you saying that okay, because if the roles were reversed, the Palestinians would be doing worse stuff? Are you saying that because of that, the occupation should continue, and that that justifies the Israeli treatment of Palestinians? Because that's obviously just a terrible argument, in part for the reasons that that you were just talking about. But they could also just be making a weaker point, which is like, okay, if we're ethically evaluating the conflict, this is grounds for claiming that there's like this sort of fundamental moral asymmetry between Palestinians and Israelis and that uh, the Palestinians are worse in the conflict of the context than the Israelis because of this difference in moral dispositions. Even so, I, I still think the example could work. Like imagine um, that person who's just talking about actually like locks this person up and- God, this is why the ML shit or any Marxist <laughs> analysis or any of this oppressor oppressive, it just robs you of all critical thought. It is such a cringe, epistemically empty way to analyze a conflict. So yesterday, uh, yesterday, uh, this kid murdered his entire fucking family, but, uh, his parents oppressed him for actually his whole life. And so he actually, uh, uh, rape and, and, and throat cutting are actually, that's the language of the unheard, bro. So the guy did it. And like, was it bad? I mean, like, I'm not going to sit here and defend it, but bro, he Dude. So first of all, <laughs> this is like totally disanalogous because we weren't saying the Palestinians uh, were are oppressed, so therefore the Palestinians carrying out like violence against Israel and Israeli civilians is justified. In fact, in this podcast, we explicitly argue that Hamas 
firstly attacking Israel, even like in the abstract, in the sense of just did they have a right to carry out an attack uh, against Israel on October 7th, we all answered that question in the negative. And not only that, but we also said, and even if they did have a right to attack, clearly the various war crimes that Hamas committed couldn't have been justified. So that was all said. So we're not using oppression to like justify Hamas's behavior as suggested by this analogy. The point is, if we're doing a comparative moral analysis on the extent to which two parties in a conflict are condemnable, of course the fact that one party has been oppressing the other party and that that oppression factors in to the more vicious dispositions of the oppressed party that people like Sam Harris will point to as evidence of them being morally worse in the context of the conflict, of course that's going to be relevant uh, to, to a moral evaluation like that on really any plausible normative ethical view um so yeah this is just a weird point from destiny i mean he's just coming off like a boomer here i don't know like this is just giving me like boomer vibes like oh these fucking lefty marxists and their oppression bullshit firstly like it's hilarious to tie it to marxism <laughs> as if marxists are like the only leftists who are concerned about oppression i don't know this is all very strange I don't know. That just sounds like a lot of oppressor, oppressy, Marxian, Marxist, Leninist <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. It was oppressed for a long time. Like, it's such a bankrupt way of analyzing any situation. It's so stupid. Torture I'll take his word for that. that like, his it's crazy because Destiny is just not tracking at all. <laughs> like, this entire response, he's just not tracking any of the points that we're making. Like, he keeps making these counter arguments that are just completely orthogonal to what he's supposed to be responding to. I don't know. It's, like, actually kind of surreal. <laughs> like, Destiny is, like... I feel like Destiny is, like, better than this, you know? And I've had, like... You know, I've had a lower opinion of Destiny lately with the Israel-Palestine stuff than I ever have. And even this, like, surprised me with how low quality this was. person, like, wants to kill him, but obviously, like, the person is clearly incapable of doing it for whatever reason. They don't have the, the means, maybe, or something like that, or they're incredibly weak. Uh, yeah, this person locks them up and tortures them. Who's worse? Yeah, yeah like, it right. seems like that person. I take it that you're right that Sam Harris wasn't exactly making um, the point that I was referring to earlier. I do think, however, that there are people who I don't know why are taken seriously who do seem to say this type of thing That's as an true, excuse yeah. for why you shouldn't like negotiate with uh, Hamas at all. Um, but then it just seems it seems like the real reason, the the only plausible reason that actually makes sense to me is if you think that the fact that they have these intentions and giving them a state would allow them to enact those types of intentions mm -hmm. and they were to maintain those intentions after you give them a state. But the last two seem at least highly in doubt. Yeah, and just to just to clarify, like you know, I agree with you that those assumptions are in doubt and they're in, in doubt like in part because. Uh, Please don't say oppressor oppressy. <laughs> One of the problems with the oppressor oppressy dynamic is that it robs your ability to understand any perspective besides that dynamic. So if he's about to go on a whole tangent about, well, if you just give them a state and you give them a, an economy, then they're not going to be oppressed anymore. And now they won't attack you because you're not oppressing them. So it'll all go away. He's not going to say that, right? Okay. Like, firstly, I like the idea that Destiny has just, like, a priori <laughs> ruled out the possibility that the fact that some party is being brutally oppressed and aggressed upon contributes to explaining why they engage in violence against their oppressor. <laughs> like, that just seems like a very plausible hypothesis, like, on priors. And also, there seems to be good empirical support for it, like, across history and, like, sociological work, etc. Um, so, you know, kind of weird that he's just, like, ruling that out as uh, an explanation or even a partial explanation of, of Palestinian aggression against Israelis. Um, <clears throat> and it's also, like, his comments about, like, oh, well, if you accept this, like, oppressor oppressy dynamic, it robs you to, con you know, it robs you of your ability to consider the conflict from any other perspectives, so, like... Like, what does that mean? <laughs> like, holding that some party is oppressing some other party in the context of the conflict somehow means that you can't also analyze the conflict from any other angles than besides from that dynamic. Like, why would that be the case? How's that inference supposed to go? He's not going to say that. Um, 
in part because intentions are just a very, very small part of the story. Um, obviously, you have to consider their practical constraints and so on. So, like, even if, you know, when given a state, the Palestinians would still like to see the destruction of Israel, you know, they'd still be highly unlikely to actually do it because, obviously, their military power will never even come close to Israel. So any offensive of that sort, if the Palestinians were given a state and then tried to attack Israel. Oh, this is an even dumber argument. You would just do guerrilla warfare. Do you think the IDF couldn't destroy all of Lebanon? What was it, 500 Hezbollah fighters finally forced the IDF to withdraw from southern Lebanon? Okay, so my claim was that um, if Palestinians were given a state, they would be unlikely to attack Israel because doing so would have no reasonable hope of accomplishing some desirable military aim, and it would carry a very high likelihood of worsening the position of Palestinians. Uh, and in, in essence, them launching such an attack or, you know, uh, returning to engage in aggression with Israel would be obviously, predictably, massively counterproductive from the perspective of Palestinian interests, which is why I was saying it would be unlikely. Um, at least that's one of the reasons why I think it would be unlikely. And Destiny's response is they can just do guerrilla warfare. Like, presumably, even if they're doing guerrilla warfare, like, how does that change what I said? That, it, you know, them doing that would be counterproductive from the perspective of Palestinian interests. Um, yeah. Like, bro, what do you mean? It's guerrilla warfare. Gorilla. Well, it's obviously, like, without a doubt, going to fail, uh, and then they're just going to end up finding themselves in a worse position. They'll probably be reoccupied. Then Israel will have much more carte blanche than they do even currently to go all out on the Palestinians. Because Bro, what are you talking about? You think it would be just as easy for Israel to occupy a sovereign state? Well, hold on, actually, because they kind of did. <laughs> I didn't say. I didn't say that um, Israel... Uh, I, I didn't say that, like, if they gave um, Palestinians a state, it wouldn't be harder for Israel to reoccupy them than it would be for Israel to just, con you know, continue occupying them in the status quo. That wasn't the claim that I made. The claim that I made was that if um, Israel succeeded in reoccupying Palestine after Palestine was given its own state and then proceeded to attack Israel, Israel would have much more carte blanche to um, treat Palestine with um, overwhelming brutality uh, and cruelty, <laughs> right? That was the point. Um, but, but I mean, what's more, uh, like Gaza for since the Israeli withdrawal has been, you know, fairly independent, right? And so it's not, it's not like uh, Israel's just activating a bunch of soldiers that are already there, right? I mean, soldiers had to be moved across the border. So I'm I'm just not sure what the massive difference is between having, like, more official uh, autonomous areas in Gaza um, versus the status quo in terms of the ease of Israeli attack, right? Mm -hmm. It was taken in 67, right? Because Syria, Syria technically attacked first. So, okay, never mind. Never, never, never. If, if the Palestinians are their own country, I think Israel would have a much harder time invading them and holding on to territory. Because then they'll have. But it's like, you know, even if, you know, even, it's, even though it's the case that the Palestinians getting their own state would put them at more of a security advantage relative to Israel than, you know, where they stand currently, um, that's totally, again, that's compatible with my point, which is just that. Um, you know, Palestinians, if given their own state, the expected value of attacking Israel once they've been given that is uh, very negative because uh, even though Palestine is in that scenario is, even, is a bit more powerful than they are in the status quo, they're still going to be much less powerful than Israel and Israel is still going to win um, any like military engagement and could easily uh, reoccupy if they wanted to, etc. Of this like oh well we ride peace and we even gave them a two-state solution but they just didn't accept it so you know just like given those those practical constraints and given that it would just be so obviously not in the palestinian interest to pursue those ambitions <laughs> why wait, what what if the palestinian ambition is for one state over historic palestine you wouldn't expect well the point that i made earlier was that those kinds of idealistic ambitions are a very small part of the story <laughs> when we're talking about 
explaining how a given foreign policy actor is going to behave because we have to take into account their practical constraints, etc. I mean, that's the whole point that I'm making. <laughs> I don't know why Destiny would think it's a relevant response to this point to bring up that they might have this idealistic ambition to, you know, destroy Israel or something expect them to try to pursue it. The fact is the political intentions of various populations and political organizations shift along with the political context. And the Israelis are in a position where they have the capability to change the political context in a way that engenders a political, a substantial political shift. Okay, why did I waste my time watching this? I don't care. <sighs> wow. Okay, yeah, right, no, next that video. was just a terrible response. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, that was Destiny's um, initial response to our video. Um, we've, you know, raised numerous responses to Destiny's criticism of our video. Um, you know, the main one, probably the primary response being that over half of Destiny's arguments against our video is just a kind of basic tracking failure. <laughs> like, he just kept responding as if we were making legal arguments when we had made very explicit, and the context of the video and the article that we were responding to made very explicit that the analysis that we were undertaking was a moral, normative analysis rather than a legal one. Um, now, uh, interestingly, uh, a day after um, Destiny responded to our video, uh, an Israeli Destiny viewer who I kind of sort of know through Discord uh, named Sample Text went on to Destiny's stream to basically raise some of these same points to Destiny. I had like a short conversation with Sample Text over Discord about Destiny's response. Sample Text then went on Destiny's stream the next day to... Um, raise some of the criticisms and so here's destiny responding to that okay what do you want you were disagreeing a lot yesterday go hey destiny okay first my disagreement is about your coverage of mouthy's podcast um okay quick i'm just to be clear i'm not a mouthy simp or anything but okay you covered mouthy um and mouthy kept and his friends kept constantly saying morally this is not an argument morally 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 and this is not an argument and you kept appealing to international law you kept appealing to because you kept standards. using terms like war crime and human shield that's not okay. morality. That that's like... that's not morality. These are legal terms. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's just evidently false. Just yeah. straightforwardly false. You can go to our video and you can like search through the scrunchship. You can watch the video. You can listen to it. We never brought up anything about war crimes or human shields. Uh, all of our or most of our points were about like morality. Some of them were also empirical. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like. If you're curious, if there's any like coping coping Destiny fans in the audience, just go watch our original video. <laughs> we don't say anything about legality. We explicitly were talking about morality the whole time. <laughs> um, yeah. I agree with that. They said that in the beginning, but then they're making like the conversations about. Yeah, that's not true. That's not, that's not even true. I mean, that, this is fine. I mean, thank you, Simple Text, for going on to challenge Destiny on this. But like, I mean, even that is conceding too much. We didn't we didn't mention any of these legal terms. We didn't mention the term war crime. We didn't mention the uh, term human shield. Um, yeah. We said genocide, but only in the we said genocide but only in the context that we think it's not that morally relevant whether it's a genocide or not right what's important is yeah the and facts. also also that we thought there was evidence against there being like a genocide right <laughs> they said war crime maybe like once or twice in the beginning but like the entire yeah not even once or twice never morally terms also they made the argument oh, but oh, i'm sorry do you want to respond and then i'll move to the other thing he said <sighs> give but, me the um let me go just look at the fucking Thing real quick. Okay. Also, uh, he on Twitter he said they're planning a response or whatnot. I'm not a simp. I have no dog in this fight, but I'm just saying it felt like wrong. They, they keep talking about morality. You could you could blame them for like confusing terms for that, but like you you could also address the moral argument that they clearly they want to make. The other thing they said is like, um, well, what insurance do they have uh, like that another October seventh will be? It, they said October another October seventh will be unlikely, and you appealed to well it happened before. Now I mean, do, do you think? So for those of you who are listening to this podcast, we're watching the video. You can't see the video because this is an audio podcast, but, you know, what you would see if you were watching Destiny's stream with us right now is Destiny going to the transcript of our video and then Control-F searching 
for the term war crime to find all the times we invoked the term war crime and scrolling through the transcript as he fails to find a single example. Yeah, this is just so funny. Like, it's like he's going like, oh, man, well, it can't be that I was like retarded and just like utterly failed to track and then somehow post hoc concocted these like false claims about what we said you know it must have been that they actually said something about war crimes yeah, and yeah. human shields you know it couldn't have just been me missing their point Dude, and this is like so annoying because you know destiny like gets super upset understandably so when people you know like say false things about like what he said you know or stuff like that but then he's doing the same to us and it's like very infuriating you know, mm -hmm. like, I don't think he's like lying because he actually does like go to check, you know, but like, mm -hmm. he's just like, you know, being incredibly like negligent and stupid. Like we just yeah. did not say any of those things. Yeah. Right. But then when he goes and checks and find that we never said it, he's not like, oh yeah, my bad. They didn't actually say that's that. True. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. He just doesn't address it. Yeah. Really good argument. I mean, it's just, um, wait, shit, hold on. Really bad, very good. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so in a way, he is being kind of dishonest. What's here. What are the odds that this was a real phone call? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I think I think it's a real phone call, but it'd be funny. He's just faking it to get out of <laughs> answering the question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm saying that it's not yeah. it's not acceptable to be like, oh, well, October 7th probably won't happen again. Why would you ever say that? It literally just happened. Why would you say it probably won't happen again? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like saying 9-11 like, would probably not happen again after it happened once, right? It's just pretty clearly, it, it just seems very, very true, right? Like, after you're on guard, you're way more focused, you're, like, taking everything way more seriously, like, just, just in terms of prevention. It, but, but... I mean, Wait, hold on, but we, yeah, it, because we made massive structural changes to the way that we do security in the United States. Israel hasn't made, or doesn't seem like they're going to make massive structural changes to the organization of the occupied territories, are they? Okay. Firstly, um, firstly, like, you know, bringing this up as a symmetry breaker is questionable because it's not even clear how much the massive structural changes we made um, after 9-11 have actually really done anything <laughs> to prevent another 9-11. I mean, in fact, like the empirical evidence that I've seen on like the TSA and like the airport security stuff and all of that, um, you know, I like I, I guess, you know, I'm not sure what all structural changes have been made. I'm sure there was more than just, you know, the airport security stuff. But of the stuff that I've seen, of the structural changes that I'm aware of that I've seen evidence on, um, I, I haven't seen anything to suggest that it's been effective. Um, so, I mean, but, you know, that's more of a minor point. I could easily be wrong about that or just, like, you know, have imperfect information. But, I mean, the more important point is just that, like... Um, based on the level of information the Israelis had about the impending possibility of the October 7th attack, they don't even, they wouldn't even need to have had, like, it's not some structural, some lack of structural integrity in the Israeli military or intelligence system that led to the October 7th attack happening. What led to the October 7th attack happening was just negligence and a chronic, you know, like a severe underestimation of Hamas's willingness to engage in an attack on that scale. And so it's like, no, they don't need to make structural changes to make this unlikely to happen again they just need to take the threat more seriously which presumably they're going to now that uh it's come to fruition at least once well okay no so israel if you look if you follow the news on it um it, it seems like the, the like we had prior i'm israeli by the way for those of you know, it seems like we had some private knowledge a uh, prior knowledge of the of the, of the planned attack or something i don't believe that i don't seriously. think that's true um, I mean, there's the New York Times reports on that. There is like yeah, uh, it all comes from some anonymous Egyptian, Egyptian like big... source that said they warned them that something might happen soon. I don't, yeah. No, that's a different thing. That's a different... Yeah, yeah, I like mean... uh, uh, we already like talked about this, but yeah, like the the New York Times report that sample text is referencing that this guy is referencing is like one uh, where they gain this information through emails, documents, and private interviews with Israeli officials. Mm -hmm. And it includes much more detail, you know. Right. Uh, that's fine. I, 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 I was reading a Ben Kaspid article. He's like a very big uh, journalist. He's a, he's not any. any I mean, so is Glenn Greenwald. You can shoot me that article if you want, or post. No, well, he's not a Glenn Greenwald. That's what I wanted to say. He's not a Glenn okay. Greenwald. I'll send it to you. I even translated it for a friend. I'll send you the translation. But it's kind of whatever. That also, um, 
just a quick question. Might be might be weird to, to ask, but it's just like um, your first conversation with Mister Girl after the Bosch. Okay, like, and and we're done talking about yeah. it. Right. Wait, wait, wait. And here's like one thing is that you know, like it's interesting because like okay, like sure, like Destiny didn't know he hasn't like read this article, but you know, you might think for someone who postures as much as he does that he would you know at least try to keep up with the news a little more yeah you know yeah. especially when it comes to things that are very relevant you know when analyzing these attacks yeah yeah that's for sure wait let's give a quick like outro thing yeah yeah so in summary um this was you know destiny's response was terrible he didn't make any interesting points um basically all of his arguments were just kind of these like basic tracking failures i mean to be fair i don't think it's because he's stupid to be honest i think it's because he was just like spite watching my video and just like super lazily like looking for any statement to dunk on in any way that he knew how um and you know so i think he just ended up like hastily making a bunch of stupid points while misunderstanding what we were saying um but yeah i mean overall <laughs> I was disappointed yeah. with the quality of Destiny's response. And if yeah. Destiny ever wants to come on the podcast, okay, he's uh, welcome. All right. We won't uh, triple team you, okay? Um, we won't, like, dogpile you or anything, Destiny, if you ever wanted to come on. We'll be uh, we'll be nice and uh, fair. <clears throat> Anyways. All right. Okay. I very badly have to go. I'm, like, half an hour late to class. All right. Uh, so yeah. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye.